Welcome to Electrified, it's your host Dylan Loomis. So today we get this news, Tesla halts a $1 billion bond sale and I have seen so many questions online why is Tesla doing this now? They have all kinds of cash. I don't understand it. What does it mean for the stock? What does it mean for Tesla as a company? How do these asset backed securities work? So in this video, we are going to nerd out, but it's always a good day to learn something new. And then at the end, we'll race through a few quick news items. So maybe pause the video, grab a coffee or a tea, and let's dive into this together. First, you need to understand what an asset-backed security is and you need to understand the term securitization. This Tesla bond sale will be backed or collateralized by Tesla contracts for leased vehicles. So Tesla is going to package a pool of these lease contracts that they've originated over a period of time. These contracts will often be transferred to an ABS, once again, asset-backed security, trust, which becomes the home for these contracts. The trust will use proceeds from the bond sale to actually pay Tesla for the contracts that were transferred into the trust. The process of bundling these contracts and putting them in a trust is called securitization. So each month, Tesla customers make payments on their leases. Tesla will receive a fixed amount of money, some of its principal, some of its interest, and then these payments are submitted to the ABS trust. The trust will then use this monthly cash flow from Tesla's customers to repay the bond investors. These investors in these Tesla bonds will get monthly payments usually, or it could be quarterly. And once again, it's going to be some principal and some interest. So how this works financially is that Tesla is going to earn what is called a net interest margin. This is the difference between the interest rate that Tesla customers are paying on their leases and the interest rate paid to the investors of these bonds. Here's an example. Tesla's securitization has an average customer interest rate of let's just say 7% but Tesla only pays the bond investors 2%. So in this case, Tesla will still earn a 5% net interest margin on the loans before covering expenses and fees for the process of securitizing these contracts. This process can also lock in net interest margins for Tesla for the life of the loans, which would also remove exposure to any changes in interest rates for a specific loan if it has variable rates. These auto ABS loans are a huge deal and they make up over half of the entire ABS market. So this is something that many automakers do. Tesla actually started this process in 2019. And in 2020, Tesla did an ABS deal with coupons of 60 basis points or 0.6%. And they did one in 2019 that was at a 2% coupon. Tesla pays lower rates because they have high quality lessees. Tesla customers are typically affluent and there's a growing confidence in Tesla's ABS securities. More demand in these bonds leads to higher prices, which will mean lower yields that Tesla has to pay. This confidence is growing in Tesla because they're getting more resale value data in the used car market. You have to remember residual value is a key metric in the contracts and all of the finances for how these contract lease deals work. Additionally, as Tesla becomes less reliant on auto credits with stronger cash flows that will reduce the ABS risk, but the biggest factor here in these deals is actually going to be the residual value risk for the investors. Residual value risk for Tesla is actually quite simple. Just think of a resale value guarantee. Tesla has offered this historically on some of its leases. We've covered this more in depth in a previous video. What this means though, is if the market value of these leased Tesla vehicles ends up being lower than the resale value guarantee, Tesla is going to have some financial exposure with these lease contracts because they would owe the customer that higher amount that they guaranteed in the contract. However, thanks to the current supply demand imbalance, Right now, if somebody defaults on their car loan and the lease and the car is ultimately repossessed by Tesla, the loan servicer can actually get a higher price for the car at auction, which reduces losses on the auto ABS loan deal. Auto loan defaults have been mitigated with stimulus and relief programs, and Tesla has low default rates in the luxury segment, once again, because their customers are typically affluent. However, looking at the broader market, not just Tesla, more people are buying their leased vehicles instead of turning them in, which benefits the auto ABS market due to the reduced residual value risk. And even if customers turn in their leased vehicles, the residual risk is reduced because that automaker, say Tesla, is going to have the ability to then sell those cars at higher prices, which generates residual gain for the auto ABS lease deals. There were also many people on Twitter assuming that Tesla is just 
waiting to be bumped to investment grade. I personally don't think that's the case for two reasons. One, some of these bonds were actually already being marketed as if Tesla was going to proceed with the sale. However, in the short term, interest rates have jumped. And I think it's a simple matter of Tesla not liking the pricing and the rate scenario right now with the elevated uncertainty. Now, it obviously wouldn't hurt Tesla to wait until their investment grade to issue this deal. However, I don't think this deal ultimately hinges on that happening. And just so you know, Tesla is not the only company to halt one of these offerings as there have been seven securitized debt deals that have been delayed just since the start of the Russia-Ukraine invasion. All right, so most of you guys know I try to be very thoughtful with the sponsors I choose to work with. Today, I think you're gonna love this one. I've linked up with Charity Stars to bring you the opportunity to win a brand new 2022 Tesla Model S Plaid. Yes, you heard that right, an opportunity to win a dream car and to support a charity in the process. This go round Charity Stars is raising money for one tree planted who is fighting against deforestation by planting trees. And while I think about it, we should probably tell the environmentalists at Giga Berlin about this charity. To enter, just head to charitystars.com slash electrified100 and coupon code electrified100 will be automatically applied at checkout to get you 100 free entries. Just choose your donation level, enter a minimal amount of information, click donate and zoom, you're in. As usual, taxes and shipping are included for United States winners, and this is a global sweepstakes. You guys know the deal with the Model S Plaid, the quickest accelerating car in production today at 1.99 seconds, zero to 60, 1,020 horsepower, and don't forget about the backseat entertainment for your passengers. Look, the simple truth is a lot of us will never purchase a six-figure vehicle, but Charity Stars is giving you the opportunity to own this bad boy, and you can support one tree planted in the process. CharityStars.com slash Electrified100, coupon code Electrified100, get your free entries, and one more thing, if you win, I get to borrow it for a weekend. So that's a bit about how these work, but now let's talk about why Tesla would do this. As we know, Tesla does not have to do it once again as evidenced by delaying this sale. We do know that Tesla is expanding quickly and they spend about six and a half billion dollars in CapEx in 2021, and we can assume a similar amount for this year, 2022. Tesla has about $18 billion in cash on hand, and Tesla generated $2.7 billion of free cash flow in quarter four. So if you annualize that very conservatively, that would be $8 billion in free cash flow generated after CapEx or capital expenditures for 2022. And realistically, that number will probably be over $10 billion. So plenty of people are wondering if Tesla has a three year runway with their CapEx spend and cash on hand, even if they weren't generating any free cash flow annually, why is Tesla doing this? Well, two obvious reasons. One, they wanna keep a cash cushion to avoid ever being forced to raise money in an unfavorable setting. So in the event of a black swan event, or if sales were to stagnate, or whatever the ultimate reason, a recession, Tesla doesn't wanna be in a position in the future where they're forced to do this at rates that are not attractive. Additionally, doing deals like this signals some level of confidence in Tesla's expansion plans, and very simply, an ability to generate a return that's higher than the coupon rate or the interest they're going to pay to these bond investors. And this is probably the most overlooked benefit and it's not a direct reason, but it's more of an ancillary benefit. It actually establishes and develops these relationships with banks, which is always a great thing for automakers when it comes to financing and doing future deals and raising money and all of that. And lastly, for context, Tesla had $2.7 billion of automotive ABS notes outstanding at the end of 2021. On Twitter, you might see Gary Black, he said four billion. However, that figure was vehicle and energy product financing. And lastly, well, what does this mean for Tesla stock? Is this bullish or bearish? Look, guys, not everything that happens has to be bullish or bearish. Some things are just how businesses run and operate, especially in the auto market, and this is primarily one of those instances. And because I don't wanna be somebody just sitting on the fence, if I had to lean one way, I would lean bullish. Just because Tesla is expanding, they have a lot of things they want to invest in, they clearly have some direction, they clearly are gonna have plans for this billion dollars that they're going to raise, essentially. And more importantly, this isn't traditional debt because once again, and it's backed by these lease contracts, which are generating cash flow. So hopefully that explanation was helpful. If it was, 
you know what to do. Just let me know that you like things like this for the future. And of course, I cannot close today's video without touching on this, Elon working on Master Plan Part 3. Now, for some context, when Elon tweeted out he was working on Master Plan Part 2, which was July 10th in 2016, we actually got the report published or the blog published 10 days later, so we might actually see this here in the next few weeks. And the reason this right here is so important is because it will presumably commit Elon to Tesla for at least another five years, just because they're still working on a lot of master plan part two. So running through the previous master plans, we have part one in 2006, build a sports car, check the Roadster, build an affordable car, the Model S. Now, yes, I know you can argue, well, that's definitely not affordable. However, it was affordable enough to continue Tesla's mission and push it into the future. Part three was another more affordable car, which Model X was next sequentially, and zero emission power generation solar panels. How is Tesla doing on part two? Once again, that was initiated 2016. Solar roofs with battery storage, power wall, yes, in operation and delivered. Expand EV lineup to address all major segments. They talked Cybertruck, Model Y, Model 3, Semi, Roadster. Now one they said a high passenger density urban transport. Nothing has really been said for that particular vehicle so maybe that'll shift into part three. Self-driving 10 times safer than manual. I don't think we're there yet. And robo taxis to actually make money. Sending your vehicle off while you're at work or at home to make money for you. Definitely not there yet. So it seems like we're maybe a little early for this master plan part three, but I love that Elon is thinking into the future. He's clearly excited about it and ready to make kind of what they're working on more public. So I think overall it's a great thing. And my predictions, not really anything surprising here. HVAC, I just think it's time. They have the heat pumps. They said it's basically already solved. They just have to integrate it into homes. Commercial bus, maybe that could be the vehicle, that high density urban transport that they were talking about. The Tesla van, I think the bot's gonna be a huge part of it. AI, and they'll probably mention AGI. I personally have my doubts about that anytime this decade. And I do hope and maybe expect at least one surprise product, something that you know most of us don't already know about. But as always, let me know what you guys think for Master Plan Part 3. And last two items for today, the Water Association in Berlin will not terminate the supply contract with the car manufacturer, Tesla, as threatened. So looks like we're in the clear. And Tesla is launching a new virtual class called Get to Know Your Tesla. Owners can learn more about their cars, charging, functionality, and they can submit questions. I will link this below if you're interested in signing up. Don't forget, check out Charity Stars linked in the description below. Please like the video if you did. Hope you guys have a wonderful day and a huge thank you to all of my Patreon supporters.